We are welcome once more to another important session to feed on the word of God, to see the direction God wants us to go, to see the things God wants us to do in our daily life. The life we live today is a test or an opportunity for us to demonstrate the very things that God will use to assess us on the last day. And so it's important for us to know and to bear in mind that every opportunity, every occasion that comes our way is opportunity for us to do something for eternity. We need to discern those opportunities, identify and isolate them from distractions from the enemy and be willing to invest our time and our resources in doing the very thing that God wants us to do so we can receive eternal reward. We are continuing in our systematic studies in the book of Matthew. We're looking at today's study, number 94, on the title, The Great Eternal Separation. And it's based on the teaching of Jesus in Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46. I will read the text and I'll go on to explain some things that God wants us to bear in mind as we live this life. In Matthew 25, verse 31, Jesus said, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. First, I want you to note there, he says when. He didn't say if, as if to say, um, create doubt as to whether he will surely come or not. This tells us that Jesus is coming one day. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. So he's talking about all nations. Everybody, every nation, every people will be gathered before the Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall separate uh, them one from another as the, a shepherd divides his sheep from the goods. So when he's, he's using an illustration, he says, as he didn't say that this will be dividing or sheep from the good, but he's saying, as in, in other words, in the same way, in the like manner that a shepherd divides sheep from good. So God is talking about the great eternal separation of all people by talking about nations. He's referring to people, all the people, all the nations will be gathered uh, uh, before them. And we are told he will divide them into two camps. Verse 33, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you, from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungry, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it, unto one 
of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. See, so uses the word everlasting there, which is why I titled this eternal separation. And he said them the reason, for I was an hungered. Well, let me read verse 41 again. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, depart from me, ye cause into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So the illustration was based on sheep and goods. Sometimes a shepherd allowed both of these to graze grass together because both of them eat grass. He can allow them to walk together in the same pasture, eat together, but a time comes that he separates them. And Jesus is telling us here that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to judge the whole world will be similar to that. All nations will appear before him and they will be judged. They will be assessed based on what they were doing. And I want us to pay great attention to what is being uh, mentioned here. The justice, the characteristics, because this is where we really need to uh, um, improve upon and do more. Uh, because sometimes we are so self-centered, so uh, preoccupied with ourselves that often we allow our personal problems to make us to become insensitive to the needs of other people. But God doesn't want things to be like that. He gives us so that we can become channels of blessings. And sometimes, of course, we need to be uh, careful as well because there are some things, experiences people go through in life that can become hindrances to us actually observe, uh, doing these uh, kind of things that God wants us to do. And some of those uh, ex ex experiences, the bad things that do happen in this area are things we need to pray for God to give us wisdom to know when uh, it is not right to uh, perhaps waste the limited resources that God has given us on feeding the wrong habits or the wrong practices of people. But we also need to pray for God to give us the discernment to know those that are genuinely in need and uh, do something that can help to meet their need. Because what we see here in this story is telling us that everybody on earth, of course, was created in the image of God, in the likeness of God. And whatever we do to those people, we are doing them directly to God, doing them directly to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we need to see things. God doesn't bring things our way so that we can just grow up and become millionaires and billionaires and, be, and trillionaires or whatever. No, he wants us to become channels of mercy, channels of blessing to help those that are underprivileged. 
to help those that do not. I said there are some hindrances in this area where we need discernment. And it is some of these hindrances that actually discourage some people from doing things in this area. What, what are examples? There could be very many of them. Um, I will just mention a few examples of them for purpose of illustration. There are people in this world that are like parasites. They don't want to work with their own hand, but rather they just want to sit down idly and lazy and want to, uh, want to depend upon other people to provide for everything they need. They are like parasites. Uh, they are healthy, they are strong. If opportunities come for them to do work that can enable them to earn a living, they turn down those opportunities. Uh, they despise working with their aunt to make a living, but they are looking around. Oh, that person uh, may have money. Uh, so, so give me something, give me something. Well, the Bible itself says, a person that is not going to work with his own hand should not eat. And uh, it wouldn't just be right for us if we notice that that is what is happening for us to just uh, waste God's resources to sponsor parasites, to sponsor those that are refusing to make use of uh, what God has given them to earn a living. The Bible tells us that those that used to steal should steal no longer, but that they should get up and walk so that they will have enough to take care of their needs and also to meet the needs of other people. Another hindrance uh, will be the wrong examples of people, especially in some countries of the world, like in countries like this, in Western countries, we have the benefit system, welfare system, that makes provision to those who legitimate cannot, legitimately cannot provide for themselves. And the benefit system enables them to earn and to get enough support in terms of money to be able to uh, pay their rent, uh, uh, pay their bills, and then live on that. But some of these people have gotten into wrong habits that even when they get that benefit money, they just waste it on non-essentials. And they come out to be begging other people for money. Uh, sometimes they stay on the street to beg. Uh, sometimes uh, even when the government wants to put a great accommodation for them, put them in homes, put them in um, hotels, they will reject those things. They come out to stay in the street wanting to beg. Well, we are not supposed to waste our resources for people that have already been provided for and where those provisions should be enough <clears throat> to meet their needs. So we shouldn't be feeling guilty if we are not uh, responding to those people. But sometimes, it may be difficult to actually identify those that are genuine and those that are not. There are other people as well that have gotten into wrong habits, wrong habits of using drugs, alcohol, uh, uh, drinking a lot, intoxicating drinks that can make them <coughs> a, 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 a drunk. And so they just come and be asking for money, give me money, give me this, give me that, so I can buy food. Sometimes they say they want to use it to buy food, but the moment they are given the money, they just go and waste it on hard drugs and alcoholic drinks uh, uh, on the wrong habit. And so for such people, it is like sponsoring the wrong habits, uh, sponsoring their uh, um, kind of attitudes that are not good. Then there are other people. In fact, many people have gotten into trouble even in this area. The next area I'm going to mention about because there are wicked people. They may even be relations, close relations 
that are on the other side into all cause that are living wrong lives. They will they come and ask for money. Give me this, give me that. And when you give them the money, they take it into uh, powers of darkness, or call power to make you to ruin the lives of those other people. And there are many whose lives have been ruined because of those juju power that were made against them because of the money they give to those people. They gave to those people. They were doing things to help them. They were giving the money to meet a, a need as they understood, but they didn't know that those people are wicked in their minds. They were not looking for uh, money to meet needs, but they were envious of these people. They were looking for points of contact from those people to use it to make, uh, uh, to go and make uh, uh, um, evil charms or wicked things against such uh, people. Now, we may not know exactly who uh, may be asking things for such wrong reason, and which is why we need to pray and be sensitive and let the Holy Spirit lead us. Now, there may be many other wrong types of examples of abuse that we need to be aware of and we need to avoid. But having said that, despite the fact that there are abuses and uh, uh, people that may have wicked and evil intention, God expects us to be charitable to those that are in need. You see Jesus Christ talking about different categories of uh, help that were given to them, uh, sorry, given to the people. He says, I was hungry, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. Uh, I was a stranger, you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison, you came unto me. So these are the kind of things we should be looking out for. Looking uh, out uh, to see where are the people in these situations that we can help. Sometimes we may not be able to identify all of them directly by ourselves. But there are uh, people and organizations that are actually uh, uh, um, carrying out work to support persecuted believers. Believers that are killed for the, uh, for the gospel, that are beaten, that are made homeless, that are uh, uh, persecuted because of their faith. And there are Christian organizations that are specializing in those areas of work. One of such organizations is Open Doors. Now, where we cannot go directly to help those people, we can send uh, donations. Uh, through these organizations to help such people. Now, this is, uh, there is currently war in Ukraine. Millions of people have been displaced from their home. Some have left the country, uh, and, but there are some organizations that are helping, giving, uh, 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 providing things to meet their needs. We can identify with those organizations and send help, send donations towards those organizations, and they will use it to meet the needs of all these uh, people. And uh, sometimes that is what I do. Last week, I felt the need to do it again, even though I've done it uh, sometimes in the past uh, concerning uh, the Ukraine, these things. And last week, I just felt the need to do it again, and I did it through uh, one of the organizations that uh, <clears throat> carry out uh, charitable work in those areas. When you do things like that, God sees, and you may not actually know the people that you are doing it to, but these are people that were created in the image of God. These are people that are, are suffering uh, for no fault of their own. And uh, God sees the such things as if you are doing it directly to him because you are having mercy upon them. So, brethren, I want you to bear in mind and know that human beings are created in the image of God. And God sees it as whatever you do to these people, 
you are doing it to them. And God is telling us that on the last day, he will judge people, assess them on the basis of what they did to other human beings. I mean, the people that didn't do any of these things, it doesn't necessarily mean they did not have the means to do those things. Maybe they were too preoccupied with themselves. They were preoccupied in their comfort, their uh, uh, ability to amass wealth, and they didn't want their wealth to decrease. They were more interested in uh, 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 their plans, personal plans, personal comfort, personal everything that they now decided to ignore the needs of other people around them. I mean, when Jesus said, I was this and was that, they said, ah, Jesus, we didn't see you. I mean, some of these people may have been church goers. They may have known about Jesus Christ. If they were to have seen Jesus physically on earth in this condition, they would have rushed to say, oh, Jesus, we want to do this for you. But they didn't know that when they bypassed their neighbor, when they failed to do it to their neighbor, to their friends, to other people around them, it was essentially the same as failing to do it for God. And Jesus says that that day will come that they will be separated. You see, some of these people may be living together today, going to the same schools, working in the same places, same place of work, same uh, 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 institutions of learning, uh, same uh, 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 environment residential places, they live together in similar areas, go to the same market, the same shop, the same a a places. But a day is coming that the great separation will take place. That separation is great because it will be done by God himself. That separation is great because it will be eternal. After the separation, they will not come back together to live in the same place. They will not come back together to live, to walk in the same place of work. They will not come back together to eat in the same restaurant or do other things together. That uh, 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 separation is final. It is eternal. It is uh, permanent. And the judgment will come. Those that actually lived as God wanted them to live, the Bible tells us they will be rewarded with eternal life. They will be uh, 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 rewarded by being ushered into the kingdom of God to enjoy forevermore. But those that had the opportunities and closed their eyes, closed their eyes, bowels of mercy, uh, and, and stopped from helping those people, the Bible says they will be thrown into a place that was prepared for the devil and his angels, meaning that hell was not prepared for these people. God didn't prepare hell for human beings, but the people that refused to choose heaven will have no other alternative than to end up in hell because there is no middle ground for those people. So we've uh, talked about here, the illustration Jesus Christ used uh, to talk about what the opportunities we have to do good. And one of the key message, key point that we notice here is that every good deed done in the name of Christ to anyone created in the image of God is a deed that is done to Christ and will be rewarded. And that those that fail to do that, fail to have sympathy on fellow human beings, fail to meet the needs of other people, fail to help them, will eventually be condemned to hell fire. Now, the other thing to bear in mind is that God is a just God. He knows what each person can do. And he knows when people cannot do something. And so you are not supposed to uh, be a live in guilt. If, for example, somebody had need and asked you to help and you were not able to help, 
maybe because of other uh, challenges or circumstances you are passing through or limited resources you were not able to uh, give, God may not blame you or punish you because of uh, that. But we still need to bear in mind that God wants us to help. And so when there is opportunity and when you can, you need to do it. You see, God is not just looking at what people do, how much people do, but it's looking at their willingness, their ability. That is why the, the widow woman that gave two mites, put two mites or two fathings that made a mite, or two mites that made a fathing, is the other way around, two mites that made a fathing into the offering was picked up by Jesus Christ and uh, uh, um, spoken of. Whereas the rich people that gave a lot, gave more in, 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 into the temple, Jesus didn't mention anything about them. Jesus was looking at the heart. Jesus was looking at the condition. Uh, at the condition. And let's also understand that sometimes when the opportunity to do good come, it may actually come at a time that is very challenging to us, but the Holy Spirit will help us. The Holy Spirit will guide us to know that this is the right time and we need to do something. An example in the scripture is that widow of Sarevat. It was a time of famine. The food was almost completely finished in the house. It had just a little cake, sorry, a little flour and a little jar of oil remaining. And he was gathering two sticks to, uh, to cook the last meal. And to, after that, they will just sit down and maybe pine to death, starve to death with the sun. And here came Elijah, the man of God. Remember, this was Sidon. This widow was living. He may not have been an Israelite, he may not have known Elijah before, but Elijah came and asked him, woman, please, can you give me water to drink? And as he was going to fetch the water, Elijah said, please, can you also make me a cake, a little cake to eat? And the woman turned around and said, well, as thy soul liveth, I only have just a little flour left that I'm gathering these two sticks to make a meal and eat with my son and die. And Elijah told her, go and do as you said, but make me first the cake before you do for yourself. Because thus says the Lord, he spoke to her by the word of God. You know, that was a test. Am I going to listen to this hungry man? and take my last meal and give to him. He said, it's thus says the Lord. What if it is not God that spoke? What if he's just trying to get the, money, uh, the meal from me? It was a test, but she decided to obey. She went and made the cake first for Elijah, and the Bible tells us they ate from the same uh, uh, meal day after day until the famine was over. In fact, Elijah joined, stayed in the same household. They ate from the same meal for many years, days to come until rain came back and the famine uh, ended. They didn't die. That explains that when you make a sacrifice in the name of the Lord, God will honor it, miracle will take place. So yes, sometimes it may be sacrificial to do that good thing. Let us do it, whether it is sacrificial or not sacrificial. It may not only be when we have abundance that we are required to give, let us give even when we don't have much, but there need to be that discernment. Remember, it is not every baker that is a genuine baker. There are people that uh, want to be a parasite, you need to identify and tell them, go and walk in a living. The Bible wants people to walk. And there are people that are, they already been paid by their welfare society, all they need to be able to live on. 
and they are not using it well. They spend it on drugs, spend it on other things, and just come to beg to get extra money. God wants us to apply wisdom. It doesn't mean we cannot give to them, but you need to be careful so that you can actually direct your resources to the people that are in genuine need. And of course, you may not know when somebody is trying to trap you, wanting to get a point money as a point of contact for demonic or occultic, occultic rituals, but the Holy Spirit will direct you. You pray for God to give you the discernment to know uh, all, uh, 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 all such a uh, thing. And if you don't know and happen to give that money by mistake, in fact, you need to pray concerning anything you give that instead of that thing being used for ritual, it will become uh, covered by the fire of the Holy Spirit. It will become such, so powerful that it destroys any uh, uh, occultism they want to use it for will not work on you in Jesus' name. So today, God is telling us that we are given abundant opportunities in this world to be Christians. And there are many needs all over the world. And Christians are being persecuted in so many different places, different countries in the world. And they need help, they need support. Even though we are not in those places, there are organizations that go to those places. And when we send the support to those organizations, it is as if we are directly being there and helping those people by ourselves. And God will still use it to reward us. There may be people around us that are in need. I mean, we've got refugees coming from different places like Ukraine, uh, we, uh, people that have been displaced by war and so on. Uh, if we can help them, let us help them. So let's pray for God to give us the discernment, the ability, and God to really touch our heart with the love, with the willingness to actually do something in this area according to the word of God. Not that we are forced or compelled to do them, but that we are sensitively responding as God wants us to respond in Jesus' name. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to give us that wisdom, that understanding to be able to do as he wants us to do. 